Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Thought I'd uh, do a quick update and walk and talk. Um, I know it's been a while since I put a video out. I got another video coming out. Uh, it's been tough lately. Um, I've been asking for prayer, for the water, for the rain, and I was told that the uh, cistern, I put it that way, the cistern that I had was uh, had safety features to protect the, the pump. Well, come to find out, it didn't. So our pump in the cistern burnt out, which set us back financially. And then the pump underneath the house that pumps the water from the tank. So the cistern has a pump that pumps the water up the hillside to the tank that we have. And then there's a pump underneath the house that overheated. It's supposed to have a safety. It didn't. So it didn't shut off when the water level got low because we ran out of water several times. And... Uh, someone's dog. <laughs> but uh, next thing I know, now I got to get that fixed and repaired. Then I found out that when we pulled the old pump out of the cistern, that there's about six inches or more of mud just caked down there, which means I got to get the cistern cleaned out because it's getting tons of mud in there and into the, um, the pipes and stuff. So, like I said, we've been really uh, dealing with a lot of things right now. Uh, when it comes to water. So praise the Lord. Thank you for all your prayers, brothers and sisters in Christ. The rains have come. The cisterns up and running. We're back to having water and not having to do all these things to save on water. Uh, here on the coast in Brookings, the winter time is where it's rainy a lot. Uh, so praise the Lord that winter is here. <laughs> I love my summers. I love the springs, but thank the Lord that the winter is here. So I thank the, for all the prayers of the brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, one of the biggest things that I wanted to point out, in this next video I talk about it, but I kind of wanted to point out, um, you know, uh, just to encourage the brothers and sisters in Christ out there that are struggling with sin and, to, and their sin to the point baby Christians that are really struggling like I did when you're struggling with sin and everything, that... Um, Gosh, you got this, the verse is, um, I can do all things through Christ which with strength, with strengtheneth me. How many of us have heard that verse? I've heard it. I've used it tons and tons of times. But then God's like, you do realize the key in that is through Christ. Okay. Um, please, please, please. I'm trying to tell the brothers and sisters in Christ out there that are struggling hardcore with sin. You got to go through Jesus Christ. And if you try to do it the world's way, and you try to do things the world's way or your own way, and you don't go through Christ, you won't have strength to overcome that sin in your life. Okay? The flesh will just run amok and uh, just be in charge for those who are really falling into sin. He's just going to be in charge. And I've had uh, brothers and sisters in Christ tell me, but online you see somebody, I've been smoking. Can I do this side? Oops. Kind of hard to hold this sometimes. Um, brothers and sisters in Christ tell me that uh, I've been smoking. I've been saved for 15 years and I'm still having a problem with smoking. The best advice I can give you is that verse. I'd point you to that verse in the Bible and say, what does that say? And you'd be like, uh, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Are you going through Jesus Christ? Oh yes, oh yes, I'm going through Christ. Then you're calling that a lie. And you're like, what are you talking about? Uh, God would have overcome that sin in your life if you're going through Jesus Christ. I can do all things which strengtheneth me. So, either God's lying or you are. And that's not me being mean about it. That's just stating a fact. I am an example of that. When I was trying to get, give up things that I was supposed to, not supposed to do when I was first saved as a baby Christian, I was trying to do things my way. I wasn't going through Christ. I loved his word. I'd pray saying, Lord, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But I wasn't doing it the Lord's way. I was doing it my way. I was trying to do it the world's way. Okay? Bible says through Christ. Well, I'm not calling it a lie. I'm not calling it a lie. So then you're not going through Christ. Oh, but I'm going through Christ. And it's like a big circle. Then you're calling it a lie. Bible says, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Are you hiding God's word in your heart? Yes. 
So you've been struggling with this sin for 15 years. I'm talking about the flesh. Please, please understand. I'm talking about the outward flesh. I'm not talking about, I still have struggles in my head when it comes to movies, TV shows, and video games. Okay? There's temptations that come in. I'll see something that reminds me of a video game, and that video game starts coming in, and I start running through that video game in my head, and I say, Lord, help me get it out. And if I let it go too long, I have to say, Lord, I'm sorry that I let it go too far. Please get it out of my head. That struggle is always going to be there. But I'm talking about where your flesh just controls you. You're out of control with that. Like I'm playing video games all the time like I did after I first got saved. I was playing video games for six hours and watching movies for another two to four hours. So, you know, I was spending all day playing video games and movies. Okay, When I was in the military... I would spend most of my off time playing games and watching movies, okay? It dominated my life. My flesh was out of control. I was lost. I was a professing Christian, but I was lost. So it was dominating my life. So when I looked at that, I was like, God's like, are you hiding my word in your heart? And I'm like, sure. You know, I read the Bible. No, that's not what I asked. Are you hiding my word in your heart? Well, you know, I watch all these Bible studies, and I'm learning so much, and I was. I was learning so much. The uh, eternal security, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, dispensational teaching. I learned about the Bible version issue. Now I've learned about the Godhead versus the Trinity. I was learning a lot. And Jesus is like, that's not what I asked. Are you hiding my word in your heart? I said, what do you mean? And God's like... Uh, do you do, and I always, always advocate this, do you do memory verses? And then you don't just memorize them, but you say how they apply to you and what they mean to you. Got someone driving, coming down. But, uh, I'm going to be dark a little bit. Oh. Uh, so... Yeah, what do they mean to me? Um, God's like, you need to apply them to your life. When you hold, when my word have I hid in thine heart, that means that it means something to you in your heart. You have it and you're like, okay, I've got this memorized. Staying from all appearance of evil, what does that mean? Well, those video games I'd play, there's a lot of false gods in them. There's a lot of um, immodestly dressed women in it. Uh, violence in the sense that it's all about just ha taking pleasure and killing and it's got a lot of wicked things in there Lord I guess what that means to me is is I'm not supposed to be doing it it's not supposed to be in front of my eyes well then what is supposed to be in front of my eyes Lord the Word of God good things nature And I started realizing that I wasn't putting God's word in my heart. I was just saying, staying from all appearance of evil. Yeah, that just means head knowledge. That just means I'm not supposed to have wickedness in front of me. Oh, well. But what does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? That's the important thing. So you hit somebody up and they're saying, oh, yeah, I'm hiding God's word in my heart. So then notice it says that I might not sin against thee. We're all still sinners, and we're all still going to struggle with sin. But your flesh isn't going to control you if you're hiding God's Word in your heart. It's just not. Uh, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Are you heeding God's Word? Oh yeah, I read it all the time. That's not what I asked. That's what God's saying. It's not what I asked. Are you heeding my Word? Well, you know, I've watched these Bible studies... It's not what I asked. Are you heeding my word? Are you taking it seriously? Are you have fear of... Oh, there's a lot of people down there. I'll turn around. Are you fearing... Are you fearing the chastisement of the Lord? Do you fear God? You heed his word. Okay. If you're not heeding his word, it'll show. I guess that's the best way all this talking is. If you're not heeding God's word, it'll show in your life. If you're not hiding God's word in your heart, it's going to show. It did in me as a, as a, uh, when I first got saved. 
as a false convert, it definitely showed in my life. But after I got saved, that first two years was a huge struggle for me. I wasn't hiding God's Word in my heart. Why? The evidence, the fruit. Okay. Um, sanctify them through thy truth, thy Word is truth. God will sanctify you through the Word of God. If there's no changes in your life, then that's evidence that uh, you're not being sanctified by God's Word. It's all what it's talking about. And I want to encourage the brethren to make the flashcards, and not just any verses, Take verses, let's say you have a problem like me, and in the past I was playing video games, movies, TV shows, and yes, in my testimony, I was even into porn. God got that all out of my life, praise the Lord, but you know what you do? You write verses that condemn your sin. People go, oh, come on, you're supposed to be positive. No, you get the stack and you write verses that condemn your sin. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Anything about fornication and whoremongering. Okay, um, you know, modestly dressed women that were in the video games. Uh, movies, a lot of the bad things like using the Lord's name in vain were in the movies. Sodomy was in the movies, left and right, making jokes. And all these verses you put in there that condemn what you're doing. Okay, and you put those in your heart and say, you know what? I am doing those things and I'm not supposed to. Then, you add scripture to it. You do this all at once. Then, the next part of all the verses you put in there is verses that encourage you and show you how to overcome that sin. God's showing you how to overcome that sin. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And you write notes on there. That means i got to go through Jesus Christ. That means I have to do things God's way, not my way. Right. I guess it's just going to get dark unless I hold it right here and walk backwards. Um, you got to do things God's way. And you write down what it means to you in your heart. And it's encouraging. Okay, That word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, I need to hide God's word in my heart. Not just in my head. I'm not supposed to just say, okay, that's what the verse is. And that's what, it's, that's what it means. What does it mean to you? How does it apply to you? personally, all right, and, you know, I can go on, you can add verses, some good verses, too, that I haven't mentioned, there's one that talks about how God is faithful to forgive you, if you go to him asking, truly asking him with godly sorrow for forgiveness, all right, uh, how the changed life, you know, that it's a struggle, the changed life is a struggle, God's going to change your life, uh, the all, whole armor of God. When your flesh is trying to get out of control, the evil of this world is trying to tempt you and everything, uh, put on the whole armor of God. Put some of those verses in there. And you mix them and mash them. And then you start going for walks. You start reading them, memorizing them, and telling the Lord. You talk with the Lord as you're doing it. That's what I do. You talk to the Lord. And as you're talking to Him, you tell Him what that means to you. And how much he means to you and his word means to you. You hide it in your heart. I sanctify thy truth, thy word is truth. Okay? Um, you got to do whatever the Lord commands you. You're a friend of the Lord if you do what he commands you. All right? These are things you got to do. The tough part is the negative side. Writing the verses down that condemn your sin. The problem that you're having. Other things that I do is I did a whole packet of key scriptures that every Christian should know. Uh, Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries has a great starter for uh, new Christians. And I started with those verses. And over time, I've built the deck up, adding verses to me that I think is important to me. And all verses are important. All God's Word is important. But I'm talking about what applies to me personally that I've gone through or am going through, I've added verses to the stack, and it's gotten big. Okay, I did a stack of gospel message, um, all these verses about the gospel and leading people to Christ and everything, and it reminds me of what I went through. And God saved me. And that I wanted a different life. I wanted a changed life. So, uh, these are things that I advise that you do. That's how you keep away from sin. The other thing is, is I had a lot of these thoughts in my head, you know, because 
I could. I had all a lot of movies memorized. I've watched the movies a million times. I had them memorized. I see one thing, and it reminds me of the movies that I was watch that I used to watch. You know what I had to do? I had to fill my head with good things. I had to fill my head with the Word of God. I had to fill my head. The next thing I'd advise to you, and I've done it before, is gospel hymns. Get all those satanic style music, even the contemporary Christian music, out of your head. Memorize gospel hymns. You got to do that. That's not. It's not an option. You got to do it. You need to memorize old hymns that bring glory to God. When you sing praise, it's not about making you feel good. A lot of people think that. Well, it's all about. It's just so boring. I only had one hymn memorized, and I used to get tempted hardcore, and I'd sing that same hymn over and over and over. Okay. To some people, they'd be like, "That's so boring and it's so monotonous." Uh, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about God praising the Lord and glorifying Him and His hymns and in doing that help kept me from those temptations. Now over time I was able to add more hymns to my uh, arsenal as it were and it was great. So um, just remember when you're singing praise and you're singing hymns it's about bringing glory to God and don't get me wrong I enjoy it and it does bring joy and peace to me, but those are blessings that come from me doing it for the Lord. It's not that I have to have it, it's a blessing. So, I just really wanted to push that, what's going on in, in my life right now with uh, all the pumps and the water situation um, falling apart. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get back to doing videos hardcore. Uh, I love my brothers and sisters out, out there in Christ. Um, just know that my wife and I thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers. Uh, we got rain. I thank you for your prayers, but my wife also thanks you for your prayers. And uh, part of us losing a lot of uh, water is my wife is amazing at plants. She's got plants galore in our home now. And we kind of, we got married when winter was starting, which is, you know, it's a bummer in the sense that we want to do a garden outside, so we're going to try to see what we can, uh, try to find some free stuff and try to put together a garden, because like I said, I got set back and um, financially because of all that stuff that happened, uh, that pump was not cheap. And first, I remember talking about, mm, gosh, several months ago, uh, before I got married, that the uh, pressure tank went out. So... And part of me thinks maybe it was the mud uh, that needs to get cleaned out. So I got to get that mud cleaned out ASAP. That's not an option. I got to get the mud out. And like I said, um, it's going to be tough. And I'm going to try to stay hardcore focused on the ministry. And um, stay focused on you guys, praying for you guys, brothers and sisters in Christ. Please continue to pray for my wife and I. Um, we love living out here, but like I said, it's just, it's been trying. It's been very trying with everything that's been going on, everything breaking on us. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever had to live and conserve water. <laughs> you know, it's uh, doing everything you can to conserve water. We put buckets outside and big buckets out on the deck to catch water. Put some buckets down at the bottom of the drains so my wife can use the water for plants and everything. And we're trying a lot of things when we were like really without water. But God brought the rain back and God helped us get some things fixed. So just keep praying for my wife and I and know that we pray for you guys. So in these last days, it's very vexing going into town here. It's like, gosh, you can't. It's just you can't go into town without seeing sodomy here. And this is a small town. I thought, you know, it's a retirement community. It's a small town. And the number one reason I chose to live here is I used to, I couldn't drive for nine years because of a seizure disorder. And after that, it got put on, got under control. I know this might sound weird, but I was a little scared to get my license back. So... Finally got talked into it, and I got my license back, but I told myself that if I ever could drive again, I'm moving to the coast. And I chose Brookings because it's called a banana belt. It can, 
a gold beach up north in Oregon, north. You go on the beach, I'd say about 80% of the time. Uh, here comes a car. Victoria, come here. Car's coming. Come here. I said, come here. A little defiant. But, uh, A lot of people were down at the uh, horse ranch. <laughs> a lot of people down at the horse ranch that we have down the hill side. Um, but yeah, it's a banana belt in Gold Beach. It gets so windy. I mean, very, very windy. Um, like sandblasting you, sometimes uncomfortable. And some people are used to it. But I chose Brookings because a banana belt, it's like a shape of a banana so the wind gets blocked there's some days where it's still kind of windy but a lot of the time I'd say 80% of the time it's not and you can walk on the beach and search for stuff around here and it's, it's pretty nice that's why I chose it but it's also like I said it was a small town I live out on the mountainside it's a small town a retirement community and every time we go into town my wife and I um, we always see sodomy um, sodomites if you want to use that word um, and then yeah there's all the other stuff that gets thrown in your face the music that they always have to play that gets stuck in your head um, my wife knows a lot of songs I used to um, she knows a lot of the secular and old songs and she hates it because she hears it and then it gets stuck in her head and we got to start singing some hymns and whatnot to get them out of our head and we just want to get in there get what we want and get out um, it's getting so bad out there, um, just getting really, really bad out there. So vexed by this world, so looking at all the prophecies coming true, and Jesus is going to come back any day now. And um, yeah, I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, just my whole goal is to encourage you. Stay in prayer, stay in prayer, stay in the Word of God, trust the Lord. Do your best to obey Him, and when you fail, deny yourself. That means you come before God broken as a sinner for what you sinned against, a specific sin, having sorrow for sinning against Him. That's denying yourself. You're not going, I did this, Lord, but, 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 so He did that over there. Yeah, Lord, I did this, but I have a good reason for doing it. That's not denying yourself. You're not denying yourself when you involve anybody in your sin when you're trying to confess it to the Lord. That's not denying yourself. And if you refuse to deny yourself, you won't be able to pick up your cross. And if you're not able to pick up your cross, that's forsaking, doing a 180, you're not able to follow Jesus and get back to where you left off with your relationship with the Lord. You won't be able to. So, hopefully what I've said has encouraged you and Yes, I've just given you an update what's going on out here. So, a lot of uh, smoke. Sometimes there's some fires down in California where the smoke reaches us. We're at the time of, of the uh, season where people are burning. It's uh, We had a very dry, dry <laughs> summer, hardly any rain. And um, getting back to that. Very dry season, so a lot of people had stocked up hardcore on brush and whatnot, burnables. And uh, they're burning a lot of things, so that's a lot of smoke around here, too, sometimes. I'm uh, there's a, another dog down there. Victoria, let's go! Alright, so I hope this encouraged you, give you a little update what's going on. Um, I'm going to get back to the ministry, I'm going to get back to videos, getting them out to the brethren, and focusing... Uh, just back to focusing on the Lord and trusting the Lord. He'll take care of everything. I have, I need, we need to trust the Lord. He's got everything under control. God's hands are the best hands to be in. I uh, remember that Godhead where they hate that, where God said, no, no man can take him out of my hand, and, or Jesus saying, no man can take him out of my hand, talking about us, and no man can take him out of my Father's hand. Uh, God's hands are the best hands to be in. Okay, trust the Lord. Believe in His Word, stick to His Word, stay in prayer, and God's got everything under control. Continue to give out gospel tracts, preach the gospel, 
Um, continue to support good ministries that need support. And just know that the brethren, you're not alone out there, even though you feel like you're alone. You're not alone. We're here. We're praying for you. And we understand the solitude and the loneliness. Just continue to stand. The Bible says stand fast. Stand, 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 stand. Don't faint. Don't falter. Uh, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Uh, talk to you guys in the next video.